And I'm uh, also pleased to announce that as we speak, the transfer of F-16 jets is underway, coming from Denmark, coming from the Netherlands. One of the pressing priorities at this 75th year is, of course, Ukraine. Um, last evening, we heard President Biden make some announcements uh, about a new air defense package That's for right. Ukraine. So, Mr. Secretary, I, I actually want to start with that news. I hope you can help us unpack that and tell us a little bit more about the, the Ukraine package that we can expect at the summit. Well, you heard the President yesterday uh, talk about the work that we've done and other allies have done to put together more air defense systems for Ukraine, notably Patriots, but also many other systems, because we know that's the key to so many things. It's a key to defending Ukraine's infrastructure. It's a key to defending its people. It's a key to defending its forces. It's also key to making sure that we're unlocking the private sector and economic investment in Ukraine that will also be essential to Ukraine's success going forward. But people need to make investments in secure environments. So these air defense systems, we know, have been job number one for Ukraine and as a result for the alliance that's supporting it. But this is just part of a comprehensive package that we're putting in place, that we've actually put in place since before day one, to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs to defend itself when it needs it. And I'm also pleased to announce that as we speak, the transfer of F-16 jets is underway, coming from Denmark, coming from the Netherlands. And those jets, those jets will be flying in the skies of Ukraine this summer to make sure that Ukraine can continue to effectively defend itself against the Russian aggression. So we also understand coming out of the summit, we'll have uh, announcements that there will be a new NATO command right. in Wiesbaden that will be very focused, building on the extraordinary work of the Ramstein Defense Contact Group to sustain mm. capabilities for Ukraine, operations, maintenance. We'll have a NATO uh, liaison officer That's right. uh, in Kyiv. I mean, this is a pretty robust package that you're talking about. I want to, you said something when you last were in Kyiv on, I believe, May 14th. Mm. And you said, our strategy is that Ukraine must win. Is that package, and this is robust, but are the packages that, that NATO is putting forward, is it enough to fulfill that vision for Ukraine to win? Yeah, I believe it is. And let's, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about what, what winning means, what success is for Ukraine. And in my estimation, at least, success is a strong, independent Ukraine, increasingly integrated with your Atlantic institutions, like the European Union, like NATO, and that is able to stand on its own feet, militarily, economically, democratically. And what we see is Ukraine on a trajectory to do just that, militarily. We have an incredibly robust package that will be unveiled over the next couple of days at NATO that builds a very clear, strong, robust, well-lit bridge to NATO membership for Ukraine, including, as you mentioned, the first time NATO's dedicated a command to helping an aspiring country join the alliance. This in and of itself is extraordinary. Just a few weeks ago, President Biden signed our bilateral security agreement with Ukraine. Uh, at the last NATO summit, on, on its margins, President Biden brought together more than 30 countries to uh, negotiate and now sign these bilateral security agreements. What does that mean? It means that for the next decade, country after country has vowed to help Ukraine build its deterrent and defense capacity. That sends the strongest possible message to Vladimir Putin that he can't out outlast Ukraine, he can't outlast Ukraine's partners. So the military trajectory is clear. The economic trajectory is critical, making sure that private sector investment is being driven into Ukraine. Uh, our former Secretary of Commerce, Penny Pritzker, has been leading our efforts with so many other allies and partners. We just had a very strong reconstruction conference in Germany. Uh, but all of this is about making sure that investment is driven to Ukraine. I'm convinced that Ukraine has tremendous capacity, first, to develop a strong defense industrial base for itself and for other countries, but also because of the extraordinary innovation of Ukrainian entrepreneurs, the Ukrainian economy to develop a strong, robust economy. Of course, the air defenses are critical to make sure, as I said before, that uh, investments that are being made, physical investments that are being made, are protected. And then finally, democratic uh, deepening. The fact that the EU opened its accession process with Ukraine, the fact that NATO also requires, as Ukraine moves irreversibly along the path to membership, that it continue reforms, that's the strongest guarantee that the reforms that the Ukrainian people 
so strongly support will continue and will deepen. And that results in a Ukraine that is strong, that is independent, uh, and that is the best possible rebuke to Vladimir Putin. Mr. Secretary, I'm so glad you talked about the well-lit bridge because I think an enormous amount of energy is being expended upon verbal gymnastics in some ways, the irreversible path, the well-lit bridge, all of these terms. But what you've been talking about, the actions, that's, the robustness, that speaks louder than that's words. Exactly that's right. the relationship with, with NATO. But why are we so caught up? Why can't there be greater simplicity and clarity about this incredibly close relationship that Ukraine will join NATO. I, help me understand why we're using all of these very creative <laughs> words. Well, we have a lot of very talented people who have to spend a lot of time writing NATO declarations. Uh -huh. We want to make sure they're fully employed. So that's the secret. So ah. Subscribe to One India Channel and never miss an update.